Okay, so I am continuing. I'm on my duotone hard-edged layer where I'm just cutting away from these shadows that I got from duplicating my flat color and then just pushing their adjustment levels down darker. And then I'm just drawing with my freehand lasso with 0% feather wherever I think a highlight might be useful. I can just kind of draw arbitrary shapes sometimes to give it a little bit more dimension. And if I ever make a mistake and I decide I don't need as much of that shadow missing, I can always just use my paintbrush tool Hold down Option, select the shadow color, and paint it back in. But this is a lot like my line art. Because I'm on the hard-edged coloring, I want my brush to still be 100% hard or at least 90%. Sometimes I'll work between the 90 and 100%. And I always at 100% opacity. So if I wanted to like push that shadow into this corner, for instance, a little bit better, I could do that. And then of course you can always erase away. Same thing, just like we did with our line art. Now, the problem by with just using the freehand lasso is that all of your kind of highlight cutouts will be loose, you know, based on how much time you want to spend with these tools, with the lasso, with the eraser, with the paintbrush, to refine them. And I'm allowing them to be pretty chunky. You know, not as smooth as they could be. So is there a way to get kind of perfect shapes that are cut out? Well, there are lots of ways to alter your selections before you delete, right? So one of those ways is using the shape tools. And we'll remember that from exercise two. So let's say I wanted to use uh, triangles. So I'm going to go to the, the polygon shape tool. I'm going to set it to three sides. So it's a triangle. Remember, whenever you use the shape tool, it's going to make its own layer. So I'm going to set a triangle to cut out. Then I'm going to use the move tool and move it to where I think I want it. Right, Like maybe right there. Maybe I'll use control T to rotate it. and get it exactly there. Okay, now I want to cut this shape out. I don't want to color it as an individual shape layer just because that will end up with just a lot of layers. So say, oh, I want this shape for it or this color for it. No, instead, what I'm going to do is right click on it on the layer and say rasterize. And if I've rasterized it, then I can just duplicate it over and over again as just a clean shape. And then I can just use Control T and I can stretch them and modify them. And then I can duplicate that, Control J, and then Control T and rotate and modify additionally. And then con Command J, Control T. You see how I'm getting a lot of, of different layers here. But then I can merge them all together and then I can use them as a selection to cut out. So it actually doesn't really matter what this color is. What I'm doing is using them as a selection to cut out. Put that one like that. Okay, now I can take all of those layers, hold down Shift, and then merge them together. And now I can use my magic wand and just 
select them all. Then I can actually delete that layer and move that selection to my duotone and delete from there and get a really clean cutout on my duotone layer. And before that, I can cut away from my selection before I cut it out. So that might be an interesting way to go. Using the shape tools, kind of find a, a pattern or a really clean way to cut it out. And then just selecting around that shape, moving that selection to your duotone cut edge layer and working from there. Kind of like how the red accent looks there. So that might be something to do in full spectrum color to put some different colors on these fabric bars. Of course, I'm thinking I might put type there, so that would be a little too distracting. But you have to rasterize your shape layer, and then you can select around it, or on it, and then delete that from your duotone layer. And if you want to repeat that shape, you can just hit Command-J. So there's lots of opportunities for creative problem solving. It's all just getting good selections. And this is all in PhotoP. It's amazing how much you can do with just free software, browser-based at that. So now what do I do? I take all of those layers, I merge them together, then I can select them, move that selection to my, my shadow layer, and before that I can modify them, I can subtract a little bit from that. and then just delete away. And you can see the difference between that mechanical kind of line and my hand-drawn straight line. Hand-drawn straight line is not as straight. And then I can do the, the opposite as well. I can take that shape tool which will always perfectly match. Why, why do this as a shape tool instead of just as a selection? to start with, well, because the shape tool will always match the resolution that's given. So as I stretch it, it will be as, as clean as it can for whatever the pixel resolution is, because it's a vector until I rasterize it. But now say with this triangle shape, I want to fill this back in with, with that dark color. So I rasterize it. I select it. I 
with the magic wand, I move that selection, and then I can use my paint bucket. First, I want to make sure I hold down Option with the paintbrush, select my shadow tone. Then I can use my paint bucket and just paint it in. And then, of course, I can just use my, my brush as well. So it's probably more work than just using the freehand lasso, but it can give you really, really clean edges. So I'll do that same thing and this erase away. Now the problem is I get a lot of shape layers there that I then need to delete. I'm going to merge them all and then just delete them. Okay. So just a little bit more duotone. Highlights to cut out. Try to do the big ones first, especially ones that can go across different layers of color, even if they're thin. Come on, computer, keep up with me. There we go. And it doesn't always have to make perfect sense in terms of light logic. You're just trying to support your line art, make it look good. Inside the mouth here, this is a good example of where I might cut out a highlight, but then I also want to add a darker shadow. So again, to do that, I just select from my shadow, and instead of deleting it, I just go to image adjustments and push that one area a little bit darker, which basically just adds black into that color selection. Might do that right here too. Because I can push those duotones, as long as I'm just modifying the local color, it's still duotone coloring, no matter how many levels I split it into. I just try not to push it to solid black. Because that's what full bleed inking is for. And maybe in the nose here. Maybe I want a little shadow on the bone. Now, if you get too much into this, you start getting into what I call over-rendering. And this happened a lot, especially in the early days of digital coloring, where you would have a lot of descriptive line art, but then you would also have things colored just more than they needed to be like a little shadow underneath each tooth. And the problem with that, even up onto the tooth, is then it starts to take away from the clarity of the line art. And they're, they're both doing the same job to define the form. And so that's why there's digital painting. Digital painting is basically 